works at a big corporation. Okay, about half and half. And how about agency? Okay, any freelancers, contractors? Paul, what did, you, did you raise your hand at all? That's Paul, he's my buddy. Okay, so I'm gonna do kind of like a, a fast TED style speech on the topic of the collaborative economy. And first of all, let's talk about where we've come so we can talk about where we're going. In the first phase, people created media and they shared it. And we all call that? Social media, that's right, that's the first thing. This guy is on it, what's your name? Jason's on it. Jason? Chase. Chase is on it. The first phase is social media. People created it and shared it. Get ready. Using the same technologies, mobile, applications, internet of things, mobile payments, people are now creating the physical world and sharing it. They're creating it, it's called the maker movement, and they might use traditional uh, institutional tools like uh, laser cutting, woodworking, but they're also using new technologies like 3D printing. And you've seen a lot of those out there in the neighborhood, right? You guys, you guys see the 3D printed food? I already had some of that this morning. That's for real, okay? Now they're also, in addition to creating the physical world, they're also sharing it. And there's five things that they're sharing. They're sharing goods, they're sharing services, they're sharing space, they're sharing transportation, and they're sharing money. Let me give you some examples. They're sharing goods on like, websites like eBay, but there's also new ones like Yurtle.com, where you can trade things with your neighbors in your own, uh, without spending money. People are also trading services. You guys have heard of TaskRabbit or Odesk? They're trading their time instead of hiring consulting firms. Now space, people are co-working and, and companies are renting out their office spaces, all using mobile location apps. And of course you've heard of Airbnb. And also trading transportation. They're getting sharing transportation. There's been a, um, it's not working well here in Austin, but in certain parts of the world, it is working very well. But it's not limited to just car sharing, but it's also ride sharing. And then the fifth one is money. And that's lending club, which is peer-to-peer -peer loans. And there's also crowdfunding. In fact, Bitcoin kind of fits into that. The crowd has created the currency. So this topic, when the world, the people, the crowd, they're creating products and sharing it, that's called the collaborative economy. It's the next phase of sharing. First phase of sharing is media. The second phase is the physical world. Now, what it means is people can get what they need from each other rather than buying it from corporations. Think about that for a sec. And we've seen this before, right? Social media disrupted PR, corpcom, newspapers, and a bunch of other things. Now we're seeing that same disruption happening for the physical world. People can get what they need from each other. In fact, when you look carefully, the crowd is becoming like a company. They can crowd fund, crowd design, crowd build, crowd 3D print, crowd ship, crowd support. The crowd is becoming like a company. Now, I'm here to tell you that crowds are great and powerful, but they're also really stupid and inefficient too. So we're still gonna need experts on both sides of those things. Do you remember the first phase in 2005, the social media purists, and there's some of them here in the room today, uh, that actually said that social media and blogs are gonna kill newspapers, social media is gonna kill press releases, social media is gonna kill PR agencies, social media is gonna kill newspapers and TV. That didn't fucking happen. <laughs> Not at all. In fact, social media agencies, PR agencies, are running corporate social media accounts. So when you look at things, the purists are going to say that on the left-hand side of things, it, that this new trend is going to kill things. But in the end, it just ends up left to center. It's just going to end up progress left to center. So be careful when you hear about the, the purists in this space. Now, the good news is, if you're a corporation, this is actually an opportunity. And if you're a startup that works with corporations, you can build new business models and technologies that can help corporations tap the crowd to be part of your company. I'll give you a couple examples. Walgreens partnered with TaskRabbit to allow the crowd to actually deliver pharmaceuticals to people's homes. So that extended their business model from a retail to the final model of uh, the final mile of actually bringing things to people's homes. Here's another example. Home Depot partnered with Uber in December to deliver Christmas trees using the Uber network. You don't need a car, you don't need a truck, you don't need to get sap on your roof. Instead, you push a button and they're going to bring that to you through idle drivers. 
Um, what's another example? Uh, yeah, GE partnered with um, Quirky. And you guys heard of Quirky before? Quirky is a website where the crowd can submit ideas for different types of products. And then the Quirky team builds it and GE backs it and they actually build physical products and those are shipped and put on regular stores. So I gave you three examples, Walgreens, Home Depot, and GE, that have tapped the crowd to become part of the company, a crowd company, you augment it. And what it means is that in, in this radical future that customers and employees and the crowd, they all start to work together. Let's think 10 years from now. We may not be able to tell the difference between a customer and an employee. It's all gonna be mixed up. Think about social media. Corporations are creating content and they're repeating and retweeting content created by the crowd. It's hard to tell who's actually creating the content. It's all being mixed up. And I think that's going to happen in the future with products. The crowd will design, the crowd will fund, corporations will back it, and they'll start to mix up. I'll give you one more example of a corporation that's doing something. So U-Haul, you guys know the trucks, U-Haul trucks? They actually allow the crowd to crowd fund their actual trucks. You can own part of that tire on the truck, you can own part of those, those equipment things and move them, and every single quarter you get a dividend from the revenues from those types of vehicles. The crowd is actually funding some of those products. So these things, these new business models are opportunities for startups, these are opportunities for corporations to tap the crowd and make that part of the company. So I would love to take maybe three or four questions. I gotta run to an, um, another thing. Uh, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the thesis that I have, and maybe I can tell you uh, a little bit about crowd companies as well. Any questions? Jeff. All right, let's talk about why this is happening. There's three reasons why this whole move is happening. The first one is the sociological factors. The second is the economic factors. And the three one, third one is the technology enablement. So I'll go through each three, and I'd like to hear some ideas from you. So the first one, the social factors, why this collaborative economy is happening. Um, density in cities is increasing. Also, people are more mindful of sustainability. Also, the first generation that grew up on the internet, the millennials, are now in the workforce. Many of them are unemployed or, work, or live at home. They don't have the resources. So they were grown up sharing. It's a native and natural behavior to them. So sharing the physical world is not that much different than sharing the media and our ideas. What are some other societal factors? Any other thoughts? Yell it out. Trust in other people, that's right. And, and technology is enabling that because I, I did a sample of 200 of the startups in the space, Uber, uh, TaskRabbit, Airbnb, Odesk, and many others. And over 52% of them enable Facebook Connect. So it means Facebook enables us to have that trust with other people. You're absolutely right. Um, as a prize, you can take any of these bikes home tonight. Uh, Chase. Group buying power, so people are coming together. Uh, yeah, so when you start to see that happening, um, a, a number of buyers, that triggers the opportunity for the marketplaces to try to get more people to offer things. And that's why Uber search pricing, as controversial as it is, has emerged. What else? Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, you can take any bike you want. So uh, fr frictionless society means that it's very simple to, and, and the term, and this is from my friend Lisa Gansky, uh, she says that it's about access over ownership. Access over ownership. In fact, you can take any, this is for real, you can actually rent one of the Austin bikes that are out here, and that's access over ownership. Actually, hotels and, and taxis are an example. This is not that new a model. We're just seeing it that anything that's technology enablement. So access over ownership. You don't need to do this. Um, this Monday, I published this study, uh, and we surveyed 90,000 people from the United States, UK, and Canada, and we asked them, why do you do these things? And we found out the main reason they're doing it is because of efficiency and price. It's cheaper not to own something, and it's faster because you can get those assets wherever you want using your phone and different devices. Those are all great. What else? What else is causing this? Boomers.
is retiring, absolutely. So I'm very proud that one of the members in the council that I run, so I, I started a new company, I launched it in December uh, 10th, it's called Crowd Companies. Crowd Companies, and you can kind of guess why I named it that. And so it's an association for the very large corporations. So Wells Fargo, GE, Ford, Nestle, there's the very big companies, and one of the organizations is AARP. And the boomers are retiring, and some of them didn't have their nest egg saved up. Then it got really hurt in 2008. And 2008 was a trigger point for this new economy to emerge because people were losing their homes. What, did, what happened in 2008? Remember the slogans people were saying? What were they saying out in the street? The 99%. Occupy Wall Street. You know, F the banks. They're getting rich while we're losing our homes. Remember those stories? Now, Occupy has a business model. They have Airbnb and Lending Club. They can rent out their homes and generate it. Or they can do side jobs on Odesk. The person who edits my blog post, Lou, he's an Odesker. He's retired, but he's using this to stay sharp, and he makes, a, he makes some money by editing content that I'm creating. We all win. And also people are, rent, are renting out their homes to keep, make sure they're not foreclosed. So those are the economic conditions for that. That's right, the boomers are a big part of that. What else? There's a few more. Here's another one. We all have too much shit. Anybody here have a storage facility? I do, you do, you do. I got a storage facility filled with stuff, then half my garage is filled with shit. Why is that just sitting there? So, I mean, do you really need skis all throughout the year? Uh, there's a stat that's been floating around that the average power drill has been used, that will be used in its lifetime for 12 minutes. 12 minutes of power drill, its entire lifetime. Most cars are idle around 90% of the time. They're not used fully. So why can't we generate revenue from those idle resources and goods that are around us? And that also means our time. Have you heard of Crowdflower? Crowdflower or, or Amazon Turk? This is where you can you tap the crowd for human computing. And so there's people that are sitting around, probably watching TV, might be sitting in their underwear. They've got extra time. They can type in codes, or they can edit things, or they can do very simple tasks. And they get paid for it per click, or per item, or per hour. So we're seeing people that can activate their idle time and generate revenue. Any other reasons why this is happening? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, you gotta come closer. Oh, Amazon Turk? I'm sorry, yeah, Mechanical Turk by Amazon, sorry, that's correct. And also Crowdflower, Crowdflower. So those are all examples of human computing, so you're tapping the crowd to get things done. You get, to get paid on iterative pieces. So those are the reasons why these things are happening. So let's talk about quickly the opportunities for startups and for companies. In this radical future, the crowd can be tapped and be part of your company, but it also means that you have to shift your business model. Let's imagine you're a big company. Let's imagine you're BMW. So what are you gonna do about relay rides at car, Uber, Lyft, and all these car sharing and ride sharing sites? So what BMW has done, and this is kind of brilliant, is they're now renting cars from their dealership lots. BMW now rents cars from their lot. And we call that BMW as a service. And that business unit is called Drive Now. Drive Now. And what you can do is walk up to a one series electric car, unlock it with an app, and you can drive it. You can even prepay in, uh, the parking spot that you're headed towards, and you get out of the car and you never have to drive it again. I'd also add that our host GM have partnered with Relay Ride, and they've done stuff where they're using OnStar technologies to find idle cars that are owned by the owners themselves. And that was a deal that was done a few years back, so they were really early to get in front of this trend. So I give you a number of examples of how crowds and companies can work together, and that's really the future where I see this is happening. And I launched a company in December just a few months ago, and we have uh, 29 large corporations in the association that believe in this next movement as well. So I hope that you do too. And I want to thank you so much for your time today to hear about this space. Thank you guys.